Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about finding the area between two curves, but instead of integrating with respect to x, in this case I'm going to integrate with respect to y. Um, so suppose you have a function x equals g of y, x equals f of y, and we want the area trapped in between those two curves. The idea is you find where they intersect with, re basically you're interested in the y coordinates of their points of intersection. Um, so you find those usually by setting them equal to each other. It just depends on the function that you have and how difficult that is to do. Um, but for most problems you see in calculus, you'll just set them equal to each other. You know, do substitution basically. And then, in order to integrate, you take the lower limit to the upper limit, and then you take basically the rightmost function uh -oh, uh, minus the leftmost function. Had a pin malfunction. Um, okay, so rightmost minus leftmost. Um, and notice if you integrated this with respect to x, you would have to actually chop it up into two different integrals. You would have to do something with respect to x on the left side, and then on the right side you would have to set up a totally different integral. Okay, and you'd have to find more points of intersection because now you need the x-coordinates, you need the smallest x-coordinate. It would just be a lot more tedious to do. Okay, so in this video I think I'm going to set this one up and graph it because I think that'll be kind of a tricky part and then um, integrate it in another part because I think I'll run out of time. So, okay, well, here we go. So we're going to find the area trapped between the curves uh, y to the third minus y and x equals one minus y to the fourth. Okay, so here's going to be my cruddy little graph. Um, to graph you know, so maybe you don't know what these look like off the top of your head. I'm going to graph this one first, x equals 1 minus y to the fourth. And suppose it was y equals 1 minus x to the fourth. So you just kind of switch out the y and the x. Kind of reason by analogy if you don't remember what these look like. So x to the fourth would basically be kind of like a parabola looking thing opening upwards. So remember the negative x to the fourth, what does that do to it? Well, that flips it downwards. So this is going to be a little fast and sloppy. Um, and then really you have plus one hanging out there with it, which simply moves the graph um, up one unit. Okay, so that would be our graph. Okay, well I know we're not graphing one minus x to the fourth, we're graphing x equals one minus y to the fourth, but use the same reasoning. For this graph, it starts where y equals 1, so this graph is going to start where x equals 1. And you could plot points, you know, never forget you can plot points. The points of intersection um, would be at positive 1 and negative 1. Um, so I don't think you'll even be able to see those. So negative 1 and positive 1 on the y-axis. And again, notice if you plug in y equals... Um, excuse me, if you plug in x equals 0, you, you'll solve and get y equals positive and negative 1. So basically, it's going to be this, but opening downwards, or excuse me, to the left. So we'll graph that thing. We'll graph that one. So there's x equals 1 minus y to the fourth. And now let's graph the other one as well. Okay, so x equals x equals y cubed minus y. Okay, I gotta keep looking up, make sure things don't get weird. Alright, so, sorry, a little internal dialogue there. Um, so x equals y cubed minus y. Um, you could do the same kind of reasoning by analogy we just did. Another useful trick that, just let me remind you, is just find points of intersection. So we'll figure out now where y equals um, zero. Um, and notice if we s solve for this, we'll, we can factor out a y, um, and then we'll have y squared minus 1 equals 0. And if we solve for that, um, we'll get y, y plus 1, um, and y minus 1 equals 0. So those will be after we factor here. And if we set each piece equal to 0, we'll get y equals 0, y equals negative 1, and y equals positive 1. So it's crossing at positive 1, negative 1, and 0. So I, I think I said those out of order. Okay, um, and now you can think about, you know, what is the graph doing over these intervals? Well, I'm going to let you check this. 
But notice if you plug in 1 half into this function, you would get 1 half cubed minus 1 half. Well, is that a positive or a negative number? I think you can figure out that if you plug 1 half in, it's going to end up being a negative value, so x will be negative. So it's going to do something like that. Um, and the other part, let's see, so what does it do here in the middle? Um, so you can plug in, say, maybe positive 1 half. This is where you'd have to be a little careful, really. You would want to make sure that these graphs don't crisscross um, through this portion. Um, but I promise you that they don't. Um, so you could find the maximum. Um, you could go about doing all that stuff um, if you needed to, to find the local maximum um, and make sure that these things aren't crossing. Um, so anyways, okay, so, and lastly, let's figure out, okay, so as x goes to, well, let's think about it this way, as y goes to positive infinity, as y gets bigger, notice the x-coordinate simply gets bigger as well, and then as y becomes more negative, you'll have a negative number cubed plus some positive number, but the negative number eventually will, will start dominating, um, and I think, let me make sure my graph's not totally crazy, this one should now be on the outside which I believe does not yes because that is okay sorry again a little internal dialogue so the blue one is x equals 1 minus y to the fourth the red one is x equals y cubed minus y so now we basically just have to set up our integral and go from there so the idea is we use the smallest x-coordinate to the biggest x-coordinate. Um, so again, they're talking about the region in the middle. So the smallest, uh, excuse me, the smallest y-coordinate. So the smallest y-coordinate to the largest y-coordinate would be negative 1 to 1. And then we take the rightmost and subtract away the leftmost, which over this entire interval will be 1 minus y to the fourth minus y cubed minus y all dy, and that'll be the setup on our integral now. So I'm going to graph, or um, actually calculate this in another part, um, so if you need to see the actual computations, take a look for that, um, and I'll have those there.